Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Professor Sekuntala, Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. The subject is on Indian culture. The module is on Indian numismatics, on the basics of numismatics, the terms and terminologies. Coins have a long history. During the 18th and 19th centuries, in the archaeological excavations, we have found a number of coins. And these coins reveal the story of the money in India. And this, this story has made the scholars to inquire about the symbols on these coins which are found and also the language that was found on the coins and the figures of the human figures that is king or queen or the different animal figures which are found made the researchers to know more about the features of these coins. This made the numismatics to know more about what is a coin, how the coins were made, what was the language and the art and architecture on the coins, how man used the different metals that is gold, silver, copper, lead, protein from different areas of the country. All this made the scientist to have a the scientist to have a better understanding about the coin. So the numismatist developed a language of its own. That is the language of the numismatist. As it is an important subject to learn, we will proceed further to know more about the subject. At the end of the module, the student will understand about the basic terms used by the numismatists and also you will understand how to proceed in this field. Numismatics has its own language and the coins also speak to us that is the language of coins. Numismatic language is different from language of coins. Numisma meaning current coin in ancient Greek language. So at the end of the topic, the student will learn about the terms and terminologies used by the numismatics. Numismatics is the study of coins. The word numismatics comes from Adjective numismatic meaning of coins. In 1792, from the French numismatic cues was derived the Greek word numisma meaning current coin. In 1829, the term numismatics was formally adapted in English language. In any discipline, the proper use of vocabulary is important in the beginning. So the study of coinage also developed a language of its own. Meaning of some of the basic terms and terminologies used in numismatics is prepared to introduce the subject today. Now we learn about the important terms and terminologies that were used by the numismatists and the scholars to have a better understanding or to study a coin properly. Now, before going into the details, first we'll learn about what is a coin. Coin is a metallic piece of fixed weight conforming to a weight standard minted by the issuing authority which stamps it for validating the piece as a legal token for transaction. The stamp of the official authority is the sole prerogative of the authority which usually imprints the coins with its official emblem or portrait of a roller. 
presiding deity or even totem symbols of the tribe or a clan. The authority also decides the legend on the coin, which can be the titles of the king, the religious invocations, name of clan, kingdom or a tribe. So the metallic content and weight is dictated by the trading community and the traditions of the region as coins function primarily as money. So the coins also serve as a tool of propagating political, religious, cultural ideas for a ruling dynasty and help us understand the ethos of the issuing authority in these aspects. So far we have seen what is a coin, what is stamped on a coin. Now we will go to another uh, term which is plan. Plan is the surface of a coin. The coin's outer border is called the plan which may be big or small depending on its ability to match the die punch in completeness. You can see the coin for instance, a small planned coin may have cut legends or images. Similarly, a large planned coin will not, not only accommodate the legend image but also the peripheral design on dice. You can see the coin on top. In the Mughal period, the coins were prepared specially for presentation to the emperor are called Nazarana issues. Of the plan, when the motifs or a part of the device is partially missing as the coin is similar than the die or as partially the die is on the coin surface and rest is out of the surface that is called out of the plan. You can see the coin on gold color which is uh, the of the plan. Now coming to the, the, the important feature of a coin is, I mean the coin has two faces that is obverse and reverse. Now we will come to the obverse side of a coin, we will discuss about what is obverse and what is reverse of a coin. Now obverse, obverse side is nothing but a principal side of a coin mostly bearing the royal portrait or royal information which is known as the obverse side of a coin and the opposite side is known as reverse side. The issue of the coins obverse and reverse developed with conventions developed by numismatists over a period of time. So in coins with the images larger portraits of the king deity were considered as obverse whereas smaller images the reverse. You can see the coin the Indo-Greek coin we see on the upper side the king's face which is seen on the upper side and river side you can see the Greek god. Now coming to the river side of a coin, the word reverse comes from the Latin reverte to turn over. It is the opposite of the obverse. So the device on the reverse of a coin are usually considered of secondary importance than those of the obverse. Now we see the obverse and reverse coins of Kumara Gupta and Malva Gadhyaya Sesenian coin. Now, for better understanding what is obverse and what is reverse, we will see some of the examples. Here the side with symbols is the obverse side and the blank side is reverse in Singavaram coin. It is a Panchamarkut coin of Andhra region where we can see obverse side the symbols like elephant and six uh, uh, star symbol and whereas on the reverse side it is blank. Now you see this coin, right side with symbol is obverse and the left side with only one banker's mark is the reverse side in the imperial type of punch marked coins. So here you can observe reverse side of the coin also some minute marks which are the imperial type of punch marked coins. Left side is the upward side of the coin and it has the legend and the right side has only Ujjain symbol and it is the reverse side of the coin. So coins of Satakarni of Satavahana dynasty have on the upward side legend and on the reverse side symbol. Now the other example left side with the king's portrait would be upward side and other side would be reverse side. Gwalior coin of Shivaji Rao Shinde is the, this coin. And uh, you can see the Sekha Hindu calendar date on the reverse side of the coin. Now this is the Muslim coin 
the kalima is present on the right side and this side would be upward side and other side would be reverse side because kalima is the main important feature of the uh, muslim coins that is why they have kept this as an, on the upper side and uh, note the name of the king and his era on the reverse side on this coin of delhi sultan and also the bilingual nature of the coin can be noticed on the reverse side of the delhi sultanate coins now co coming to the coins of aurangzeb you can see the side has the king's name which is on the upper side and the other side is reverse here the other important feature of this particular uh, uh, mogal uh, coins or the aurangzeb coins we can find that the muslims they have they have no uh, figures whether, whether it is king or uh, deity figures they have only legend on their coins that is also another important feature here we can we have to notice so till now we have seen what is an upwards what is a reverse and uh, what are the i mean how the upwards and reverse were changing from time to time period to period now coming to the motif motif is a decorative symbol design or figure impressed on the coin devices the symbols or emblem or armorial design on a coin is conjunction with the legend or motto legend the words appearing on the coin or the inscription engraved on the coin is known as legend the term legend is derived from the latin word legere now coming to the fabric it is the external shape of and appearance of the coin which depends on the technique of its manufacture and the artistic capabilities of the designer in fact it is the sum of raw materials and technical process it is distinct from style and we have hoard hoard is nothing but a, a secret stock or a store or something valuable that is kept hidden or it is a wealth deposit in olden days the people used to keep their valuable things whether it is a gold coin or a silver coins they used to keep under the underneath the earth that is called a hoard now coming to the die die is the metallic piece engraved in negative form for minting coins two dies are used for minting a single coin you can see the die there now coming to the die striking striking of another coin impression over an existing coin is known as die striking and die axis to study the die axis hold the upper side of the coin upright and turn it around its axis a coin with the zero die axis will also be upright british india and republic of india coins have zero axis whereas ancient indian coins have a varying access due to the lack of technical expertise now coming to the edge edge is also known as the third side of the coin it is the surface perpendicular to upwards and reverse sides the edges can be plain reeded lettered or may otherwise be ornamental and are designed to prevent forgery of coins counter marks a mark or stamp generally made with a punch on the face of a regular issue to give it a new valuation or to indicate its acceptance as a coin of a different country or locality from the one that struck the original piece or to signify a new political authority is nothing but a counter mark these are seen when a victorious king puts his name or mark on the coins is in circulation of the defeated king and we come to the overstruck or counterstruck coins striking of another coin impression over an existing coin is overstruck coin gautami putra satakarni counterstruck coins of nahpana after defeating the later and a large hoard of such coins were found in jogaltambi hoard in maharashtra now you see a coin where a die is struck bounced then struck again offset from first strike that is called overstruck coin you can see on the coin there where it is uh, overstruck
In India, we find many Gupta series and Indo-Greek series having double-struck coins on one side. You can see the figures on the right side of the slide, where the overstruck coins are. It is also overstruck coin of Indo-Greek Menander silver double-struck drachum. You can see the diademed bust of king, which is overstruck. Till now, we have seen what is a coin and what is a what is obverse, what is reverse, and also die, die striking, and uh, different edges, mint marks, all these things we have seen. So now I just wanted to give you the detailed description about the coin anatomy. Part of a modern machine struck coin, you can see what is obverse and what is reverse on the coin. There it is an obverse coin. The parts of the obverse coin you can see rim, legend, edge, portrait, feel, date and you can see the, on the reverse side the motto, relief, mint mark and you can see the different edges for a coin. The plain edge, reed edge, lettered edge, decorated edge. In this slide, you can find the parts of a hand struck coin. Where on the upper side of the coin, we can see a portrait of a king. On the reverse side of a coin, you can see the plan and then a portrait, the deity. And you can see the dice range and the legend. And also on the upper side, you can see the field. So these are all the parts of the hand struck coin. Now I think you understood what, what is obverse, what is reverse, what is field, what is legend, what is plan, what is a portrait, how they have struck on the coin of old coin as well as new coin. Now coming to the panam. What is a panam? The name panam or phanam is derived from pon which meaning which means gold in Tamil and has become hon in Canaries. These panams have been used for a long time in southern India and are tiny pieces of silver and gold with artistic designs. Tiny pieces of copper coins also have been discovered from the Tirunelveli region of Tamil Nadu of ancient times which have been ascribed by Laventhal and they have been assigned to the 4th to 6th century AD. There are numerous types of panams and one type is Veeraraya Panam, which was started by the Hoysalas and continued all through southern India and then spread across various dynasties. This Panam occurs frequently in southern Indian numismatics. And now coming to the flow lines, a microscopic striations in a coin surface caused by the movement of metal under striking pressures is known as flow line. In cues, the opposite of a bas relief, the design in this case is precise rather than raised. And we have language on the coin. That is, first the Prakrit was used on early Indian coins and later Sanskrit appeared. And Prakrit words were Ragno, Chatrapa, Swami, and we also have on Muslim coins, Arabic or Persian words and local coins at the local language or local words. Mint state. What is a mint state? An un uncirculated coin in the same condition as when it was originally intended, showing no signs of wear but may have some marks of them being stored in bags before they are delivered by the mint to the Reserve Bank of India. Mintage. The mintage is nothing but the total number of coins of a particular denomination, date and or type produced by a mint is known as mintage. Mint notifies the number of commemorative coins which are being minted. Coin also have mint marks. Hindu kings in ancient times never mentioned the mint name. Mint names appeared on Indian coins only from the time of advent of Islamic coins in the Middle Ages. Name of the mint would be preceded by word Jarab in such coins. And in recent times, we find on the coins many notices 
of the mint marks and each mint has a mark which helps in identifying it. We also find double upwards coins. What is a double upwards? Here on the coins, the symbols on punch mortal coins are imprinted only on the upper side. Once these symbols get worn out, the reverse blank side is restruck with new symbols for circulation. These freshly struck symbols could be the same symbols that are on the worn out side or they could be different. These coins are known as double upwards side coins. These were present in punch marked coin hoards at Birmaun, Paila and Singavaram. The other related term with regard to the coin is series. Related coinage of the same denomination or design and type including modifications are known as series. And we also have variety of coins. Variety. Any change in the design of coin results in a new coin variety. It has the same basic design or type but with slight variations. For example, if you say take Asaf Jahi coins, we find an Asaf Jahi rupees with the denomination in words and numerals. Till now, we have seen what is a coin, how a coin will be, the anatomy of the coin, and the different aspects of a coin, that is terms, terminologies that were used uh, to have a better uh, approach for the study of numismatics. Now, we will come to the how a coin is, will be prepared, how a coin was minted, how a coin was manufactured, what are the important tools that they have used for manufacturing of coins will be known now. Now, we'll discuss about a mint. Mint is a facility where coins are crafted or a place where coins, medals or tokens are made. A mint is an infrastructural facility for manufacturing of coins. So, when we want to make a coin, we need to have a mint. So, naturally, in ancient period, hammered coinage or cost coinage were the methods which were used for coin minting, where production runs numbering as little as hundreds or thousands. So, the first mint was established in Lydia in the 7th century BC for minting gold, silver and copper coins. The origin of the word mint is ascribed to the manufacture of silver coin at Rome 269 BC. Now coming to the production, what is a production? We need to have num more number of coins to be produced for the benefit of the people. So what is a production? How the production was, the process of production was taking place, we will come to know. Pro uh, production is nothing but making or a process of making or manufacturing by combining various components or new materials in order to make something for consumption. That is called production. Minting. What is a minting? In minting, coinage is the process of manufacturing coins using kind of stamping is done and it is known as coining. This process is different from cast coinage. It is hammered coinage or hammering and mild coinage or milling. What are the tools that were used? with regard to the making of coins. In ancient times, the artisans made simple tools for making coins based much on their skill rather than on mission. The basic tools which were used were, they used to heat the blanks or plant thongs for handling hot plants, a table or a bench on which an anvil was mounted and a pair of dice struck with a heavy hammer to impress the design into the plan. Here I just wanted to give you details with regard to the uh, tools that were mentioned in ancient texts. For example, Kautilya in his Ardhashastra mentions in his book on statecraft about the counterfeiters of coins. Counterfeiters of coins are known in Sanskrit as Kuta Rupa Karakas. And he stated a list of objects that were used for manufacturing of coins. This is the first reference which we get for manufacturing of coins in ancient India. 
what are the tools that were used how the coins were made is described in his book atha shastra what are the tools that were used first the metal was first melted in crucibles that is moshas and purified with alkalis that is shara and then beaten into sheets in an anvil that is adikarni with a hammer that is mustika and cut into pieces with clippers that is sandansa and ultimately embossed with dice or punches bearing symbols that is called bimbatanka excepting the automatic devices almost the same procedure is used even today in the manufacturing of coins in mints all over the world now coming to the one by one we'll discuss what is an anvil with regard to the tools that were used for manufacturing of coins anvil is the surface on which the lower die is placed or fixed before striking it may be a wooden log or a metallic structure it is a heavy iron block with a flat tab top and or concave sides you can see the model there on this slide now coming to the hammer hammer is a tool with a heavy bead mounted at right angles at the end of a handle the ancient coins were produced through a process of hitting a hammer positioned over an anvil and the hammering technique was used to make the coins so hammered coins were produced by placing a blank piece of metal of the correct with in between two dies and then striking the upper die with a hammer to produce the required image of on the both the sides you can see the hammer the figure how they they were hammering the coins now it is the crucible crucible it is a melting pot a heat resistant container of ceramic or metal which was used for melting ores or metals to a very high temperature dies that is bimbatanka how the dies were prepared metal piece engraved with the design used for stamping the coin dies were made of hard bronze or iron bronze dies were easier to engrave and do not outburst or wore out faster the upper die was mounted on the anvil and the reverse die was struck to make the impression the dies in ancient period were manufactured by hand by artisans known as engravers now it is the mold a hollow container which was used to give shape to molten or hot liquid material when it cools and hardens a mold is the counterpart of a cast molds used for gold and silver coin production and cast coins are made by pouring molten metal into mold you can see the mold there how they pour the molten metal in the jar and then molds were set together for casting there are die engravers die engraver is a person who is responsible for engraving the obverse and reverse devices in two separate dies these dies are engraved in negative so that when the coin receives the hammer blow the dies is imprinted on it in positive and we have mold makers a mold maker is a skilled worker who makes molds for casting coins a mold maker makes coin molds for making cast coins the device is impressed on the mold in negative when the clay is soft and later it is dried or baked in an oven to get a strong mold with which can be used again and again for casting coins now mint master he is the director or administrator of a mint with responsibility of minting of coins the superintendent of the mint was known as lakshana adhyaksha an officer known as rupa darshaka used to check the coins so minted for purity and weight rounders it is a tool for rounding corners and edges we also use clippers for cutting the coins it is an instrument for cutting or trimming after melting the metal in crucibles and purified with alkalis it was beaten into sheets in an anvil with a hammer and then cut into pieces with clippers you can see how uh, he is cutting the 
sheet with clipper on this slide. And we also have weighing scales. Adha Shastra refers to the evidence for the wide varieties of standardized weights and measures. Weighing machines like balance, that is Tula, with two pawns of 10 different sizes are recommended for weighing different qualities. And another sort of steel add is also is in two sizes, is used for weighing scales. Till now we have discussed about how a coin was made, how a Kautil Shastra has given the list of tools that were used for manufacturing of coins. We have seen how a coin is made, how the symbols are punched on the coins. Now we see the conventions and terms which were used in numismatics. Numismatics has evolved its own terms and conventions to to denote various aspects of a coin. The short forms to describe metal of the coin were evolved with gold coins depicted with the short term that is AV from the Latin term Aurum for gold. Silver coins with AR from Argentum for silver and copper coins with AE from the Roman copper unit AES. So the weight of the coin was earlier measured in grains, which is abbreviated to grams, but is now universally measured in grams. In Indian coinage, we see many coins which are issued by another authority in another king's name, showing respect to old traditions. In this situation, we write, for instance, EIC, that is rupee issued, INO, in name of Shah Alam II. Now we will see the typological terms that is for the coins used. It is a commemorative coin, a coin with a design struck in honor of some historical or current event, famous person or special anniversary is known as a commemorative issue. These are also issued to emphasize a theme like national integration, commemorative coin of our former Prime Minister is seen on the right side of the slide. A bullion. When a coin ceases to be a monetary token and is taken as its metal value and it is designated as bullion. So till now we have seen the basic terms of coins that is terms and terminologies used for better understanding of a coin. The numismatists, the researchers and the coin collectors should know, should have the knowledge of these terms and terminologies so that it is easy for him to identify what is an upwards, what is a reverse, what is a die, what is an edge, what is, uh, wh what is a plan, all these terms and terminologies, without the knowledge of the terms and terminologies, a student, a numismatist, a coin collector, a researcher cannot do or cannot understand better and he cannot work on coins. So it is very useful for a student of numismatist to have the knowledge about the terms and terminologies. So coming to the conclusion, the numismatics has many terms from Greek and Latin and thus need to be understood in their right context. Experienced numismatists and numismatic researchers often converse with each other using standard conventions which need to be understood to understand numismatic literature and modern coin catalogues. The student of numismatics would benefit from knowing knowing these conventions to study and participate in a meaningful dialogue with the numismatist old over if she or he would understand these terms and terminologies. Hope you have understood well with regard to the terms and terminologies of numismatics. For more details, you can visit the e-text of the module. Thank you.